Today we're going to be talking about pickleball strategy. I'm Kevin Dong and I'm giving a shot by shot analysis of a 5-0 plus pickleball point. And first I'm going to give it to you full speed. Keep in mind this is one data point across a multitude of games that we played so don't worry about the dupers too much here. Okay, so there you have the point. Let's go back and analyze it. Um, over at the beginning, Ben hits his serve. And if you notice, I mean, he hits it pretty deep. In general, you want to hit your serve deep. This one is clearly three quarters of the court back and even closer to the baseline. Um, he has a pretty good serve. Fortunately for me, my partner Paul is a very good singles player. So Paul hits a pretty good return as well. And Ben drives his third shot. When he hit, drives his third shot, uh, Phil knows that BMAC has a pretty good drive. So what uh, Phil does is he starts running towards the net, um, kind of pinching this middle area, and he's looking for a poach. Uh, however, like I said, this is a one point in a whole series of games, and Paul knows that Phil has been pinching this middle pretty hard. So Paul tries to challenge him by going up the line, and uh, that's exactly what happens, but Phil's ready for it anyway, kind of justifying his positioning in this spot. Because Phil's saying, look, I'm going to put pressure so that your volley is really hard to, to put to the cross-court area. And even though Paul hits a decent volley up the line, Phil says, hey, I'm still there and covering my end of the court as well. Uh, Paul hits a good recovery shot, and now everyone gets to the kitchen. With everyone in the kitchen, uh, there's one dink, two dinks, and already I see that uh, there's an opportunity. And this is definitely not something that you would do, or it's not something that you should do every time you receive this ball. But in this case, I see that uh, I could try to surprise my opponent. Uh, I'm trying to speed it up, but not hit a winner. Because not all speed ups, in fact, the majority of speed ups should not be seen as winners. Uh, there's not really a hole to take advantage of. So here what I do is I aim for the right shoulder. So you can see this spot here that's kind of known as the chicken wing spot because if you have a one-handed backhand, if you have a one-handed backhand, it's really easy to cover this spot, this spot, but your right shoulder, it's very difficult to cover with the one-handed backhand. So that's why Ben actually covers with his forehand. He's barely able to get a paddle on it. And uh, he keeps the point alive. But you can see I'm off balance because of the way that I took a risk on that speed up. And if you are under the mentality that your speed up is a winner, you're not going to be able to get the next shot. But because I'm saying, okay, I'm doing this. I'm going to be off balance. I'm immediately trying to recover. And I immediately use that momentum to go pop up for this overhead and phil if you catch it here phil actually drops a hand off his paddle to hit this lefty reset it's a pretty cool stuff by phil there um but you know unfortunately he still pops it up a little bit so there's multiple options here on where you can hit the ball uh number one easiest option would probably be to just hit at the foot of anyone that is near you uh, so ben is still pretty close to the kitchen line he would, he would not have that much time to react. So that's definitely one viable option to just hit at his feet. Uh, option number two that Paul takes is using his height and his leverage to take this ball and hit it off of the court. So he gets a pretty good angle here. And Phil goes and he's, he's an athlete. He tracks that down. Uh, Paul here hits another overhead. And then Ben leaves it in the middle. And I see that his momentum's moving left. Phil's momentum is moving left. They're both pretty far from the kitchen line at this point. So I go for a drop volley, which I don't hit the best volley. Um, it's actually pretty deep. I mean, it doesn't even land in the kitchen. But at the same time, Phil is not able to stabilize himself. So yes, he gets there. The point continues. But he's not able to stabilize himself and hit a quality, quality dink, which means that Paul is hungry for opportunities here. And Paul is looking, looking, looking. And he sees, okay, I can't fool Ernie because the ball is still too far uh, towards the middle of the court. So what he does instead is kind of like a half mini Ernie where he 
starts leaning. You can see that here, it looks like a full Ernie's. He get, crosses over and cuts that corner. But in reality, when he hits that ball, when he makes contact, his feet are both down. Um, and what he's doing is basically leaning so far forward that he's getting an extra two to five inches of reach probably. And that's enough to get this ball to go straight down and at Phil's feet and just done for the point. Um, so that's kind of why Paul did that. Uh, it may look a little bit weird, but it's, a it's how he's able to kind of extend his reach without, um, you know, a, a kitchen violation and also uh, how he's able to Ernie without completely whiffing the ball, which is uh, something that, you know, I've personally done and it's a fine line between the two, but Paul does a really good job of assessing uh, the ball that he received and, and executing this plan here. So there you have it. Uh, there is a 5-0 plus pickleball point. If you enjoyed this, let me know in the comments below. And if you did enjoy it, there's a pretty good chance you'll enjoy this video over here or any of my YouTube shorts. 